2012, that homelessness would, we, we needed to do something. That uh, it's been an issue that has been a lot of work had been done in Houston, but there are, as I've stated on a number of occasions outside of this chamber, a lot of great organizations doing a lot of great work, everybody moving in parallel, never converging, never really adding uh, value to other people's work. It's agencies kind of moving forward, but not together. Uh, in August, well, and so immediately after that, we brought in HUD for technical assistance, and I believe that's how we uh, found out about Mandy, if, if that's uh, true. Brought in HUD, and then in August, we had a charrette with uh, experts from around the country in to look at what we were doing in Houston, and the good news, as presented in this report, is that we have a lot of assets here. We have potential here. We also have a a big problem here that we have been working hard on, but not working well necessarily on. Now we have the opportunity to really move it forward. Uh, the, the timing of today's presentation is in conjunction with Registration Week, the first week of June, where we which is May, where we go out and really begin to uh, do a, a full assessment. But there are multiple initiatives having to do with homelessness that are, that are ongoing. Uh, many of you remember this last summer when we began the uh, work with the VA and uh, began to assess uh, veterans, uh, the VASH dollars for uh, veterans supportive housing. And we, initially, we joined the competition for Housing 100 in 100 Days, which went really well. Every agency down here worked together, specifically focused on veterans, and after that 100 days, we started another 100 days and uh, continued the process. So there are, we couldn't do a comprehensive presentation of, of all the various initiatives that, that we've engaged in, but I wanted to give you the, the overall overview, get a chance to, to, to see Mandy and to understand some of the both the challenges, but also the really big opportunities we have going forward. And I know that there's a number of the stakeholders, organizations that are represented out in the audience. And, we, and some of you, but those of you with homeless agencies, and those of you who stand up, are housing agencies, uh, uh, supportive services. Thank all of you for being down here to be part of this presentation. Chair recognizes Council Member Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for the presentation. I do applaud the administration's effort, uh, efforts in trying to curb this problem. Andy, I appreciate the visit yesterday and, and the overview. Uh, and I, I just want to reiterate what I said yesterday is that I do support long-term sustainable housing. Uh, and I've supported the, these type of projects throughout my tenure on council. I am concerned about locating all of these type of facilities in district docket. So I know it's a citywide problem, and so I hope that going forward, uh, can put these type of projects throughout the city and not just in, in one particular front yard and backyard. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you know, while I do support these type of projects uh, and we put more people into long-term housing, we need to make sure that we also have enforcement and that we continue uh, not to water down our ordinances that protect our citizens and, and public property. Uh, as we put more people back into <laughs> sustainable living situation. I just don't want to see their form, people coming back in and, and, and taking their place, so to speak. We need to, and as we're putting people back into, into housing, we don't let people just come back and get filled in. So that's my other concern. And um, uh, and again, I do commend the efforts. Uh, I, I want to work with you as I have a few more months on council because this is a serious issue. <clears throat> the other thing is the aggressive panhandling. I hear too much from my constituents that this is just an ongoing problem. People are trying to get to a ball game, trying to get to the theater district, uh, trying to get to Discover Green or other amenities that we've worked so hard to, to improve in our downtown area. And uh, yeah, I think the charitable feeding ordinance was a plus because there's uh, not so much overlap. <coughs> and we need to continue on that forward as well. And I believe in the carrot, I believe in the stick. Sometimes we have to use the stick as well because they're just a segment of the population that do not want to uh, conform or do not want the healthy just to be 
proposals for whatever reason. And um, I just think that uh, let's, let's help the people that need the help, but also we also have to enforce our current ordinances, not water from the Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Council Member, if I might add one thing, uh, we didn't highlight it, but there's got to be an element of job training in doing this too. And that, that's a part that's that being brought into this program too. Well, you did mention it earlier, but uh, Sobering Center, uh, a significant number of folks who would be going through the Sobering Center, we anticipate, uh, will be part of our homeless population, and it's a, an opportunity for intervention. But again, it's a lot cheaper to run them through there than, than use our police resources on them. Councilor Pennington. First of all, I'd like to commend the mayor for, for uh, accentuating this program. I think it's, it's, it's needed. But I want to say that I'm not very happy with the presentation. Uh, to me, it seems like an academic exercise rather than an in-depth analysis. First of all, I didn't see any report on what the city and the large number of nonprofits and individuals in this city are doing. It seems like to me that, that the, that's the takeoff spot for what we need to do to improve our program. And I didn't, I didn't hear that. I was listening pretty closely to what you had to say. Uh, and so I think only by making a thorough assessment of what we're doing now do we know where we need, need to go. I know you mentioned that in terms of housing units we have, but, but you didn't mention uh, many of the programs. I know when we were considering the, the homeless feeding, feeding ordinances, I mean, the evidence that I recall was that we have more food available than that's actually being used. And um, I do know, although I'm not familiar with it exactly, uh, in San Antonio, they have quite an extensive homeless uh, facility there, and what I understand is from the population that some of them like sleeping out under the stars and some of them like sleeping inside. The point that I want to make is that I think the homeless population is very varied. Some people have health problems, uh, you know, drug problems, some people are out of a job, and, um, it, and that's the reason why I don't like your presentation, because it's very academic, and I think that we're talking about 10,000 people. And we need to find out exactly what the needs of these people are so that we can be attentive to them and responsible to them and take care of the needs. There's no question that all of them are vulnerable, but just because they're vulnerable doesn't mean they won't all want to be helped in the same way. You have to help them differently. So I would like to see a lot of more, a lot more specificity in your report before we engage on going ahead. Thank you very much. Councilmember, Member, if you would uh, go back to the part of the report, report that talks about the May 5th date, that's actually the goal of that day is to go out and do in-depth interviews with the homeless. To well, I think it's true. With 1,000 people and we have about a population of about 10,000, I think we take that census every year. We should have some basis. We, 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 we know who's there. This is an in-depth uh, in assessment of needs, which is exactly what you talked about, which will begin in May 5th. Yeah, I heard that part, but I, I guess my statement would be I think we need to do more assessment rather than just 10% of the people. Thank you. Councilor Green. Thank you, Mayor. And Mayor, thank you. I want to commend you for making homeless uh, priority in the administration. Uh, one of the things that I would hope we do as we actually go out and start the assessment is that we not only focus on downtown, but we look at all aspects of the city. Uh, when you look at the medical center area, uh, oftentimes, you, you will see uh, individuals released from either psychiatric hospitals or, or you know, uh, uh, subsidized hospitals, if you will, uh, and then they have nowhere to go, and so they're roaming around either under, uh, over you know, the 610 area, the career and Ryan Stadium area, under those bridges, Camden out and whatnot, and I'm not sure whether or not, you know, uh, when we do our assessment, that we can uh, at other areas around the city where there is pervasive homelessness. And so I would just hope that you take that in mind, uh, take that into consideration as you do the assessment. Additionally, uh, uh, with regard to the, the 14 units that you're looking at, would this be something that would be done out of the housing uh, uh, department, or is this how, how, how would that be handled? We, we expect a variety of ways that that would be handled, and some of the agencies that are represented today will, in fact, create some of those housing units, and that's the plan we're putting together now, but it would not come just from the housing department. Okay, and so we're, we're looking at, I guess, them coming, either looking for some sort of uh, homelessness funds or CDBG dollars to underwrite construction uh, for local nonprofits to construct 
these type of facilities around the city is, is that the that may, that may be one source of funding. Many of these nonprofit agencies have a, a, a large philanthropic base, and I think as you've seen by some of the billboards in town, Star Hope, for example, has taken on a very aggressive program right. to achieve that through their own philanthropy. And, and I just ask, and, and of course, you know, um, before any you know proposed project is coming to any of our neighborhoods, that we have the opportunity to discuss that and then be a part of that dialogue. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would like the opportunity to respond to, to your uh, question related to the assessment. So Registry Week will cover near north side, downtown, and into the museum park area. So we will be covering some of the areas that you've described. But keep in mind that Registry Week is just to jumpstart and achieve an initial list of vulnerable folks who need housing. The standardized assessment and vulnerability tool will then be utilized by all homeless service providers going forward so that any person who enters the system is first assessed to determine what their need, needs are and what's the fastest way to get them out of homelessness. Right now, we have a very linear system where folks, we just put folks in a shelter and then maybe they go to this program and maybe, maybe they go to that program. What we want to do is create an efficient system that first identifies the need, matches that need to the intervention that's going to get them out of uh, homelessness. So you, what you saw here today is, is I think, very academic. You're, you're correct in saying that, too. And, um, and very, you know, it's a high-level overview. But there is a lot of detail and depth behind all of this. And I would love, I would be happy to sit down and, and share more of that detail at any time. Um, and it's certainly in partnership with the Coalition for the Homeless and all of the stakeholders. Um, in that kind of industry, um, because it takes, it takes a village to respond to this problem. Maybe I, I enjoyed the academic exercise, and uh, because I could see behind it, you do have a, a plan of action. After you understand the accountability and, and the needs and um, the integrated services that you have planned, I, I have no doubt, and I appreciate the administration putting this as a priority. We have voted many times to bring down that <clears throat> 2,500 uh, people that are challenged with, with and we all know that permanent housing is necessary to solve the problem. I have one cynical question though. It, it, you always have to look at the downside. Will there be an influx, an increase uh, intended homelessness because the city will take care of it. You know, I'm paying four hundred and eighty dollars in subsidized rent, but damn, if I just go out there and apply, you know, I, I won't have to put in my three hundred dollars a month, which I really don't want to get a full time job to do that. And, and they've got a good the feeding ordinance. And, you know, will there be an influx because we will? try to take care of 100% of these individuals. And we made attempts, but this is, a, this is a, an extended attempt to solve homelessness. What would your response to, to the taxpayer that, that says that's federal taxes and, and local taxes, it's, a, it's just going to encourage more homelessness? What's your response to that? So I, I think it's an excellent question. Um, when, you have, when we've looked at other cities who have done this, we certainly haven't seen that trend. Um, I think, the, in addition, the system that we're talking about creating is not one where an individual self-selects right, where they want to go. We're doing an assessment to, to determine whether they need this level of intervention. And the assessment will be then to say, what's the minimum amount of intervention that you need in order to stabilize? Um, and so it, it in no way necessarily encourages folks to become dependent on the system, but in fact encourages the opposite, right? That, that the less support you need, the easier it will be to get that support, and the easier it will be to, to attract housing. Now, that's the broader system. The plan that I put in front of you today responds specifically to that lower end, right, of our homeless population who are not good advocates. They don't have capacity to advocate for themselves. We see those individuals suffering from significant mental illness. And so this level and intensity of intervention is only designed for those individuals. There will be graduated levels of intervention for, for folks um, as, as they move up in capacity in our system. 
So because we're no longer allowing the individual to come in and self-select which of those programs they want, but instead we're taking some control and making that determination, we think that we'll be much more effective. And other cities have seen great success. Salt Lake City, when they implemented this, have reduced chronic homelessness by 79%. Um, Dayton, Ohio, at a much smaller scale, scale, I do understand, but they've eliminated chronic homelessness. So this is very achievable. Okay, so you're, you're uh, going after the 730, uh, that's what I'm hearing. One last question, uh, uh, a little bit of a doubting Thomas. I want to sleep under the stars, and I like my six pack. You know, I don't need your help. What's your response to that? So, so permanent supportive housing is housing, and it allows an individual to live the way any of us get to live in housing. We get to make our own choices as long as we're good tenants. We don't violate our lease. Um, and so as it relates to someone who, who likes to sleep under the stars, I mean, there's an element of choice we can't control. Anymore. But so often, no individual wants to have to sleep outside every single night. And they appreciate having a place to live. But they need that living environment to be supportive. And they need that living environment to help them stabilize. right? And, and so often, we've developed programs that require you to jump through a lot of hoops in order to keep that housing. And the minute you fail, the minute you don't live up to that standard, we take that housing away from you and send you back to the street. And that has created a psychology that allows individuals to say, if I have control over only one thing, and it's to stay on the streets, then that's what I choose to control. And permanent supportive housing includes an engagement strategy that reverses that. It builds a relationship. It encourages individuals to take a chance on coming into housing where they're going to be treated with dignity and where they're going to be allowed to thrive at their pace. Now, certainly, we're not going to tolerate um, violation of the lease. Right? They have to be good neighbors. They um, they have to pay their portion of the rent. Good answer.